In this video, I'm going to discuss polygon faces in a little bit more detail and talk about the fact that you can delete faces off a surface and also replace them if they're missing. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a polygon cylinder because it's a little bit different from the other primitives. So I go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cylinder. And there's a cylinder. I'm going to dolly in and turn on Smooth Shade All so we can see this better. Now, the first thing you may notice is with this primitive, you have a combination of quad faces, rectangular faces, and also triangular ones at the top. Now, the truth is that a polygon surface is actually constructed wholly out of triangular faces. What Maya does for convenience to make the display a little easier is anytime you have a quad face, like on the side here, every quad face is actually composed of two triangles. And then Maya simply hides the division line to make the display a little less congested. So you can imagine that if you were to look at one quad, like right here, and were to draw a line from one corner to an opposite corner in a diagonal, like here, that would make two triangles. And in fact, that's what's going on when it's hidden from you, again, for convenience. That's what happens with quads when you have quads or you make a quad face. Now, you can also just have triangles for the sake of having triangles if you want to. In this case, in order to get the top filled in, that was necessary. In this case, the triangular tips all meet at the center, all the vertices overlap here in the center. So you can't really have quads on top here, it wouldn't really work, so you're stuck with displaying triangles right here. But when you create polygon surfaces from scratch, you do have the option to build quads or triangles. In fact, you can also have faces that are irregular with five, six, seven, eight sides. Now that's not necessarily ideal. It's ideal to have what appears as quads or triangles when you build a model, but you can't have an odd number of edges when you're modeling. Now I mentioned that you can delete faces, so you can select a face. Let's say you're in face mode. I'll go to the right mouse button menu here and go to face. If you click on a face, you can delete it or click on more than one with shift and delete those. If I hit the delete key on the keyboard, they go away. What you have is a window in your surface. Now this is one advantage of polygon surfaces. You cannot do this with a nerve surface. If you want to have a similar hole on a nerve surface, you would actually have to break the surface up into multiple separate surfaces and simply move them so they touch along the edges. In this case, I have a single polygon surface, so you can have holes in the polygon surface with no penalty for that. So you can delete any face you want. Now you can also replace a face that's missing. Let's say you change your mind about cutting a hole into your surface, or you accidentally delete a face when you selected an incorrect one, like maybe you selected through the back by accident and hit delete. So you can fill in a missing face or more than one missing face with a special tool. So let me uh, cut another hole here. I'm going to make a simpler hole. I want to delete a single face in this case. We'll talk about how to fill this one first. So once you have a hole in your surface, you can go up to the Polygons menu set and go to Edit Mesh. Once you're up there, you can select Append to Polygon Tool. And this tool will allow you to draw new faces in the holes. So Append to Polygon Tool, when I click that, the mouse goes into a special tool mode where your mouse pointer becomes a crosshair. You also notice that the border of that hole in the surface also becomes a little heavier. The edges are drawn heavier. It indicates that Maya recognizes that that's a hole in the surface and that it might be a candidate for this tool. So in order to use the tool, what you do is you click on one of the corners to start. So I'm going to click on this bottom left corner. Once you do that, Maya gives you some arrows to indicate a suggested route for clicking on additional corners. And what you have to do is click on enough corners and Maya can figure out where the new face or faces go and is able to apply them. So I'm going to take the suggestion of these arrows and click on the second corner to the right here. I'll click on that corner the face gets drawn in. So in this case, Maya only needed to have me click on two corners and it was able to figure out where the face goes. Now it's pink now, so it's not permanent. If I want to make it permanent, I have to hit the Enter key on the keyboard. Once I do that, the face becomes permanent. Now a new face is not a separate polygon surface. It's actually integrated into the existing one. In fact, if you go to a window like the Outliner, You'll see that, indeed, I only have one polygon cylinder surface, but I have no additional polygon surfaces in the scene. I can tell that because the polygon surfaces are represented by this tiny polygonal plane icon, and anything that's a primitive starts with P, so I don't see anything else in the scene right now. 
So that face is integrated into the pre-existing surface without having to make a separate surface. So I'll close that. And I can also fill in holes that are a little bit more complex. So I'm going to cut another hole here. I'm going to go back to face mode and pick a few and hit delete. And then we'll see if we can fill this hole in with the append tool. It might take a few extra steps. We have to make sure the Maya does not get confused as we do it, but it's possible to fill this with the same tool. So I'll go back up to Edit Mesh, go to Append Polygon Tool once again, click that, go into the Special Tool Mode. Again, the border of that hole becomes thicker in terms of the way it's drawn. And now I need to start clicking on edges. So I'm going to start at the bottom left here. Again, you get the suggestion arrows for which way you should click additional corners or vertices points. So I'm going to go click the bottom right one now. As soon as you have two, it's going to try to start filling in the face or faces. So now I have one try face It's thrown in there, but obviously the hole's not finished. So I'm going to continue to click around the direction that it suggests. So I'll click here at this corner. And I'll keep clicking. Now based on the shape of your hole, you might find that some of the new faces or some of the pink new face area might be drawn or existing polygon face. Now you might just need to go further along the border in order for it to sort out where the hole needs to be filled. And for instance, in my case, I haven't filled the hole yet, so I have to keep going. And looks like it's done pretty good here. It's able to figure out that sideways T shape by just clicking here, here, all the way around each single corner up to here at that point. It's figured out where the hole needs to be filled. So if the hole is filled, I can hit Enter. And that polygon face is filled in. Now it's a complex face. It actually has a whole number of edges here. It's not a quad. It's not a tri. Maya has drawn a regular face here. Now secretly, it's divided up into a bunch of triangles so it can compute it. But just for display, you have a really odd polygon face with an odd number of edges. Now again, it's ideal to make your model out of quads or tries or a combination of those. And in fact, if you were to work for a studio, they would want you to operate in that fashion. However, if you're just working for your own project or practicing, there's no real damage done. You can still render this, you can still texture it. It's still a single polygon surface. It's just a little bit unusual. Now there is a way to take this as is and to add additional division lines or add additional edges to break it up into quads once again. In fact, we'll talk about that in a later video.